Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth, and welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity what Zack Snyder did to the DC Cinematic Universe. Sometimes the stupid is so strong, I can taste it through the monitor I'm watching a flurf video on. And this flurf has left a taste in my mouth that will not go away. Today on episode 16 of Flurfs Are Idiots, I'm taking a look at someone who personifies the top left of the Dunning-Kruger chart. This flurf thinks the atmosphere has a pressure gradient because there isn't a magic tree stretching all the way to the dome, and says that angels came down and made babies with humans, and those babies became giants, and, um, and, and this, this is the giants. Only watch this if you are sure you have face palm protection, because frankly, I'm fed up of getting angry letters and emails about people getting black eyes. Guys, I've done it. I have found the biggest idiot on YouTube, and his name is Why You Are an Idiot. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen the back and forth between Professor Dave and Globebusters. Well, why you are an idiot thought that he would weigh in. I still haven't recovered from the stupid I put myself through to make this video for you guys, so final warning, only proceed if you have face palm injury prevention methods in place. Now Professor Dave is going through Globebuster's response to his first Flat Earth video, uh, and if you haven't seen it then I'd seriously suggest checking it out, the link to it is in the description of this video. Here he is explaining how on the flat earth the sun would have to travel at different speeds depending on the time of the year. One, this object maneuvers the inner path in a shorter amount of time than it maneuvers the outer path, which would make summer shorter than winter. It's not. Option two, it moves much slower up here and much faster down here so that all of the circles take the same amount of time. That would mean the sun moves through the sky at different speeds throughout the year. It doesn't. The sun moves 15 degrees per hour at all times, which anyone can verify for themselves with the naked eye. So sorry, this model doesn't work. See Dave, this is why you are an idiot. Because you are making assumptions. You don't know how far the sun is. You don't know how fast it's moving. You don't know any of that shit. You are making assumptions. So let's get this first one out of the way. <laughs> yeah, this is a common phrase that comes from a flat earther. You are making assumptions. And the reason they use that phrase is that they don't understand the reasons that we know these things to be facts. It's called personal incredulity and it basically boils down to, I don't understand it so it's not real. We do know the distance to the sun. It's approximately 93 million miles. One, the sun does speed up and slow down. Here, I'll give you a bigger one. The sun literally stops moving, completely stays in place. It completely stops moving and then it starts back up again. And guess what? I have video evidence to prove that. Here, take a look. I warned you guys twice. If you just hurt yourself after watching that, then it's on you. Seriously, you think you're going to see the sun move in just a few seconds of footage from space? You moron. You absolute pinnacle of stupidity. You see the sun move 15 degrees per hour from the surface of Earth because the Earth is rotating around its axis, which means from the surface, you rotate away from the sun. Next, Dave explains away the misunderstandings of the Coriolis force by Bob Nadell and Jism. None of it makes sense. In actuality, the Coriolis effect is just the result of basic physics relating to rotating bodies. That's why the equator is the dividing line. Pretty simple, don't you think? Dave, listen up very carefully. Okay, idiot, pay attention. I'm gonna ask you one simple question. Can you prove the Earth is rotating? Wow, we don't need to. Bob Nadell did, remember? In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. 
So yeah, the Flat Earth community got a fiber optic gyro and used it to measure 15 degrees of rotation. Next, Professor Dave explains why astronomy is a science and how we do do experiments with it. In the 19th century, we noticed irregularities in the orbit of Uranus. We realized these irregularities could be explained if there was another planet perturbing its orbit by gravitational influence. We did some math and predicted that there should be another planet in a particular place. We looked in that place, and what do you know, there it was. You can't get any more empirical than that. Do some math, make a prediction, the prediction is verified. The discovery of Neptune is a great example that corroborates Newtonian gravitational theory and demonstrates that astronomy is an empirical science, just like any other. Hey, idiot. Pay attention, okay? I'm going to show you something. Very interesting. All right? So use your eyes, okay? Not your feelings, your eyes. So this is one of the images that, you know, NASA puts out about Venus, of what it looks like. You know, this is the image that they give us. But when you actually look at it in reality, this is what it actually looks like. Yes, this is what Venus actually looks like. Okay, so what's going on here? Why do they look so different? Two things here, butt nugget. That clip of the planet sizes you just showed, well, that was from a channel called Science Magazine who uploaded it in 2009, not from NASA. And the other thing is that this is an out of focus shot of Venus taken with a P900. A P900 is not a telescope and probably shouldn't be used for trying to focus on things that are millions of miles away. Next, Dave gives an excellent explanation of the motion of the planets and the solar system, etc. There is no absolute motion. There is only relative motion. And these big numbers that you're throwing out for shock value are irrelevant to what you're saying. We can treat the solar system as an inertial reference frame and the physics works just fine. Dave, I could care less about the physics. I could care less about the motion. No, I bet you couldn't because like all flat earthers, you don't care about facts. Only what you can fit into your moronic narrative of a magic snow globe created by a giant beardy bloke in the sky. What I'm wondering is if we are really moving through the universe, okay? Just like that graphic shows, because we are moving through the universe. That's what it says. I don't care at what rate. Why do we always see the same stars no matter what? After some time, they should disappear. And I don't mean like move from a different location. I mean completely disappear. You really are an idiot, huh? Because this is one of the dumbest questions that I hear from Flurfs. And it's got such a simple answer. In the night sky with the naked eye, we can see about this much of the stars around us, which is a tiny portion of the galaxy that is moving through the galaxy with us. And next, Dave tackles gravity and the Cavendish. Can't wait to hear why you are an idiot's rebuttal to this. The Cavendish experiment certainly notwithstanding, but there, there's no evidence to suggest that mass attracts mass. Uh, all you did was name the experiment that does the thing you're asking for and then proceed to say nothing about it. Physics undergrads do this experiment all over the world all the time. If you think it's invalid, explain why. Dave, this is why you are an idiot. One, the rotation of the Earth. You cannot prove the Earth is rotating whatsoever. At all. No one can. Two, the core of the Earth. You definitely can't prove that <laughs> at all whatsoever. You can't. Okay, so you're also completely ignoring the Cavendish, just like Globebusters, and instead saying we can't prove rotation. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift and we can't prove the core. Now, apart from Bob and his buddies Jaiwo already proving the rotation of the Earth being 15 degrees per hour, we can absolutely prove the core using the science of seismology. We can map the interior of our planet pretty accurately. But as I explained to you in our debate, the core of the Earth isn't related to gravity the way you think. It's the Earth's entire mass that causes the curvature of space-time which manifests as a force. And then what we have left is mass attracts mass. Well, I'm going to grab two cups that are on my table right now, one on the left, one on the right. And guess what? They're not attracting to each other. Well, that's just wrong. They absolutely are being attracted to each other. But the force of attraction is overcome by the Earth's gravitational attraction, the friction between the cup and the table, and even air resistance. So yeah, if you hadn't just ignored the information about the Cavendish, you wouldn't have sounded like the biggest moron on the planet. If you had studied science in a formal setting, 
you'd know that. See, Dave, this is why you're an idiot. If you had actually studied religion and, you know, actually read through these religious texts, not just the Bible, but more, you'd understand where we get our technology. But here, let me show you. This is the book of Enoch. I'm going to read this. Okay? And the angels taught men to make swords, knives, shields, breastplates, and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them. Really? Huh. So you won't trust modern, accurate empirical data, but you will put your stock in a book written 2,400 years ago and pieced together from fragments of a dead language. Yeah, cool. Why not? Now, this is before the flood. So there should be evidence of this, right? There should be some type of evidence of this, right? <sighs> yes, there should be loads of evidence. Well, look here. Nothing new. This isn't new technology. This is old. This goes back thousands of years. We're just recreating it. It's nothing new. No, th that that's that's not evidence. That's, I mean, it's it's just just go to the remedial classroom, please. <laughs> Okay, sit down, shut up, and switch on your brain. Oh, what am I saying? If there was a zombie apocalypse, you idiots would be the only survivors, and then the zombies would starve to death. Okay, today we're going to look at... What is it, Mr. Riley? You've got a sick note for the week starting the 20th of May. Is that the same week that Fight the Flat Earth is doing Sleeping Warrior Week? No, you will come in and watch every video he puts out. Also, I need you to do me a favour. Mr. Oakley is missing again. When you see him... Ask him what the fraction is. Okay, today we're going to explain why, when you look at things, sometimes they look like other things. This is called pareidolia. Pareidolia is the tendency to interpret a vague stimulus as something known to the observer, such as seeing shapes in clouds, seeing faces in inanimate objects or abstract patterns, or hearing hidden messages in music. Rocks may come to mimic recognisable forms through the random processes of formation, weathering and erosion. Okay, everyone got that? Yes, Mr. Riley. No, for fuck's sake, there is no independent variable in pareidolia. Get out and stay out until the 20th. Oh good, home time. I need alcohol. So, why you are an idiot thinks we live in a dome. With waters above and God above the dome or whatever. Now, the dome thing is an issue because unless gravity is real, which you say it's not, then inside the dome would have an equal pressure everywhere. Which we know isn't reality as we have a pressure gradient from 14.7 psi at sea level to practically zero psi as you get higher in altitude. Let's listen to the explanation why you are an idiot has. Basically, um, when the Yggdrasil is gone, we're talking about it reached onto the dome. It reached onto the dome. Once it got cut down, how much of, you know, because supposedly, you know, there's a connection between the air and trees and all this. So if you cut a tree that big down, how much are you going to lose? And you can look at the animals. If you look at the animals of the past and okay. you look at the animals okay. of today, um, I'm gonna they're have to... twice as big. They're twice as big in the past. They right. are twice the size in the past. That requires way more air pressure. And since you is so high, mm. there should be no pressure gradient. You remove it, there is a pressure gradient. Yes, guys, you did hear that right. The reason there is a pressure gradient now is that there isn't a giant magic tree. He says the giant tree would have pumped out enough atmosphere to make it so that there wasn't a pressure gradient, and since the giants cut Yishimil down, that's why there is a pressure gradient now. Please, please don't think too hard about it. Your brain will explode. He, he doesn't understand that there has to be a force pulling down on the atmosphere to create a gradient now. And do we know what that force is? Gravity, you fucking retard! Gravity! Have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons. Your support allows me time to focus on my channel and do what's important, bringing you great content and fighting the flat earth. I want to say an extra massive thank you to my $200 patrons, Christopher Kane and Jeffrey Sloan. If you'd like to join and become part of the FTFE team, go to patreon.com forward slash FTFE. And thank you. And that's all we have time for today. If you've enjoyed this destruction of why you are an idiot, then please like this video, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell so you never miss anything from FTFE. And remember, stupidity is not a right. 
fight the flat earth. Fight the flat, fight the flat, fight the flat.